Um, the purpose of the advisory design panel is essentially peer review of projects um, being put forward um, in order to uh, the panel exists to give advice to uh, mayor and council through our discussion. Um, and that if, uh, if any members of the public are interested in additional information on this project or others to contact the planning department um, and uh, just ask that it is just listening in today. Um, and if you have any questions, you could contact Greg uh, at planning or, or any of the planners who are dealing with the project specific. Um, other than that, um, has the panel had a chance to review the agenda as circulated? I believe there's just one item on it today. Move adoption of the agenda. Uh, thank you. And a second? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. And any opposed? Hearing that, that motion is carried. And so moving on to the adoption of the minutes as circulated. Presuming again that everyone's had a chance to review them. And um, with that, can I have a motion, please, to uh, adopt the minutes as circulated? I move to, to accept the minutes. Thank you, Rashir. And the second, please. I can second that. And we'll give that to Paul. Um, so any opposed to or any discussion on the minutes? I see Phil waving his hand. I can't hear him. Bill, I think you're muted this time. You're muted. OK. Anyway, okay. sorry about that. Uh, I, do oh, have, I do have two things in the minutes. Uh, okay. One is trivial, but um, you know, the other one maybe is something that uh, Greg may care more about. Page five of the minutes. Under uh, Greg, thank you for making most of the changes that I had suggested. Right there, go page five of the minutes where it says, keep up, 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 up. no, it must be the next one. It's on absinthe page right there where it says, on the third line under me, it says size of the house. It doesn't make sense. It should be side of the sides of the house. Fair enough. Okay. And another, you had another comment, Bill? More significantly, um, Greg had raised the question that there had been no seconding of one of the motions. Is that correct, Greg? This, this is the motion about um, uh, on bottom of page four of the minutes. Greg raised that there was it right there. Motion was presented by me. Um, no, there, and Greg, I don't know if I can, can he hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Phil, yeah. You had raised in an email that there had been no seconding. Yeah, there was no uh, there was no recollection of a seconder on that motion, and I checked the video, and there was no formal seconding. Do you need anything from us now? No, I, the way I was looking at that is that the original motion was moved by yourself, seconded by Nicholas, and I was seeing it as the revised motion being sort of carried forward in the same fashion. Good. Yes. Thank you. That's it. That's good. So other than the, the typographical correction, um, any objections to the minutes as amended? So hearing none, we'll carry those minutes. Thank you. And moving on to the first item on the agenda. Um, oops. I, which is here. Bear with me for one second. And, uh, So the first item on the agenda is for uh, 1453 state, state, state road, um, 21 three-story townhouse unit. So I'll pass the uh, electronic microphone over to Greg, uh, perhaps to give a staff um, perspective on this project. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair, and through you, just as a way of uh, advisory to everyone, I'm, I'm also, we're recording the meeting and it will be published to our YouTube page at a future date. So just as a as an awareness, if you have any issue with that, you may want to either turn off your camera or, or exit. Um, I'm also, as we go, I am muting people 
if you're not speaking, just so that we don't get feedback. So if you're confused by, you know, I didn't click mute, it's because I'm probably doing it on you. So um, anyway, so with that, I have an introductory presentation and then we'll we can turn it over through the chair to the applicant. Sure, thank you. So I'm not sure if any members of the panel have had a chance to get out to site. I did want to sort of take a different approach to the presentation today uh, to really demonstrate the context because it has been an important consideration and in, in point of discussion in our other files. But just for general reference, what I'm going to do is you can see the property uh, so sort of highlighted in blue here, it's a heavily uh, wooded property uh, between an existing commercial plaza and a three and a half, four story um, apartment building, residential apartment building. And then you can see it backs on to these uh, duplex units to the west. Um, the other thing I would just point out in terms of where it sits within the city of White Rock, it is on the eastern boundary of the city. So along State Road, east to State Road, you can see single detached homes. These are, these are in the city of Surrey. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk um, walk the panel around the block here. Just so again, you get a better sense of the context of this property. So I'll start here and go south and, and around. So this is that uh, mixed, commercial, mixed commercial plaza that I mentioned immediately north of the subject property. You can see the, the start of the wooded portion of the property here on the left. This um, is if I had taken a photo into the property, you would see that it's essentially a heavily wooded um, vacant undeveloped parcel. This is the southern boundary of the subject property. You can see its interface with this um, apartment building to the south. This is the actual property line of the property uh, in question here. It's heavily comprised of, I think, our, our cottonwoods, um, which are recognized by our arboricultural technician, city arborist, as um, a bit of not, not an invasive species, but a very fast growing and lower value tree species. There are some higher quality, higher value trees on the neighboring property to the south, and that is the subject of part of the, the review of this application. This is now looking up State Road. So this is the apartment building on the left. You can see it's a bit of a windy sidewalk and the subject property is here in the background, uh, again, being heavily wooded, but this is just giving you a sense of the streetscape along State Road with the single detached homes to the east. Uh, this is again, just some photos of those homes immediately opposite the subject property along State. Uh, this is looking at the Arcadian, which is the residential building to the south. And now I'm hooking around Stephen Street and looking at the subject properties on the east side here. I'm going to walk past those townhomes. Uh, this is the interface of, um, you can't see it here, but this property is on the southern limit. If you continue this property line all the way across to State Road, you would be hugging the south boundary of the subject property. Th these are some of the trees that are in question here as part of the Arboricultural Arborist Report or the protection of these uh, coniferous trees that go further in into the property. But this is the abutting, uh, southernmost abutting property or building. These are just some images of the, the homes that the, um, the proposed townhouse development would back onto. So again, just wanted to give members of the panel a sense of the existing character of development in the neighborhood. And now I've hooked around, I'm on the flanking street to the north. Uh, which is Russell Avenue. And so looking, you can see now that sort of green um, steel siding along this, this um, commercial strip mall. There is a convenience store on the corner. And then again, you can see the, the green, uh, green roofed um, plaza here and then the, the tree portion, which is the subject property. So with that, hopefully that gives the panel a sense of the context. The proposal itself is a 21 unit, three story uh, townhouse development. There would be 42 parking spaces, so you'd have two spaces for each of the residential units, plus four visitor spaces, including one van accessible parking space. This is a new requirement um, established in the City White Rock Zoning Bylaw. Uh, so the applicants have accommodated that. There are 21 bicycle parking, so one within each unit, plus five communal spaces, again, meeting the requirements of the bylaw. Uh, two private amenity spaces for passive use, so giving you the sizes there and then pedestrian connections to State Road. And I, I wanted to point out some of these things because these are things that the applicant has incorporated, some of these anyway, incorporated into the design as a result of the iterative review of city staff. So this is the landscape plan. Again, I don't want to steal the applicant's thunder, um, but very, I want to point out some of the things that you know we've been working with them on. Um, here's the location of the van accessible parking space at the back. 
the amenity space, it was originally only uh, an amenity space back here. It was quite isolated and, and seemingly sort of under sort of underusable or not usable. Um, we've uh, we've required that they push the, the enlarge the queuing space, which resulted in the loss of the unit. That's allowed us to actually introduce an increased amenity space along State Road, which um, from the opinion of staff, I think will be an enhancement to the project. Uh, we've also looked at the architectural treatment of this end portion of this unit. Um, so again, I'll leave the architect and landscape architect to speak to some of these details. Uh, rooftop design was a concern during the public information meeting. So the residents of these buildings to the west were concerned about the potential for obtrusive overlook with the programming of the rooftop space extending all the way to the edge of the building. So they put in these physical separations or physical barriers so that we couldn't have the, the use of this portion of the rooftop on um, sort of the western half of these units. Again, to try to limit the potential for, for loss of privacy for these residents. Um, the building location you can see here, they've got another interlocking brick. Um, this is a visitor parking space and then some, some landscaping here with pedestrian connection that would connect all the way through to State Road. Again, that was a response to some of the feedback from city staff that we're quite happy to see. And it also will help ensure the tree retention so you don't have compaction of uh, the root systems of these trees. And that's all I wanted to speak to on the design. Again, I'll leave it with the applicant to go into details. The property is designated urban neighborhood in the city's official community plan. Uh, support for multi-unit uh, residential uh, uses in townhomes and low-rise buildings, density of up to 1.5 FAR and buildings of up to four stories in height. So they're meeting these OCP policy directives. Uh, I will say that there was an earlier application for a four-story building, which would have aligned with the OCP. The application, which had a zoning amendment to it, a component to it, was not supported by council. So the applicants have a revised submission to present this townhouse a form of development which is in keeping with the OCP. Project is subject to the multifamily development permit area guidelines. So I've just captured a handful that are um, directly applicable to the project and wanted to speak to how the project has responded. So building height, density and design uh, should be compatible with the adjacent developments and I've just given you a tour around the block. Uh, but staff believe the siting and design are upholding the compatibility and scale of development in the context. Uh, the inclusion of these pedestrian connections and amenity areas are also helping to break up the massing in addition to some of the rooftop spaces are, are providing some design quality. Setbacks are proposed to support gardens and uh, trees, which is a, a design guideline objective. So they uh, they have uh, provided some enhanced gardens and, and trees. We are uh, looking for a dedication along State Road to widen the boulevard there, which would allow for some, some additional street trees. Uh, townhomes are encouraged by the guidelines to provide, and the design of townhomes uh, are encouraged to have individuality. So look for the panel's uh, feedback on that component, but they have introduced a, a color scheme, a mi mixed color scheme the use of balconies on the front, in particular along State Road and roof lines to break up massing along each block. The guidelines point to not wanting to have townhomes block blocks that are more than five or six units per block, which they've respected. Um, orient buildings and incorporate windows, doorways and landscaping and architectural details to be oriented towards the street. Uh, there are some additional windows at the end of block number four, which is that northern block of townhome units to uh, again try to uh, satisfy that design objective. Uh, as I mentioned, they provided they provide outdoor common amenity. Uh, using light color materials to reduce heat absorption is another guideline, and they are doing that in the um, in the use of reflective asphalt shingle roofing and landscaping throughout the project. And lastly, there's design guidelines that point to wanting to retain large mature trees, which I've mentioned there. They're doing. There are lower value uh, cottonwood trees that are to be removed, so it does look to be a very heavily wooded property today. As I mentioned, these are in talking with our, our city arborist. These are lower value trees. They tend to grow, grow quite quickly. Um, so the uh, and then the offsite trees, black pine, red cedar, Norway maple are to be retained in part of the uh, proposed landscaping plan. We have 26 replacement trees being proposed. 
I think there is a difference of about 20 to 25 trees. We're, we're losing as kind of a net loss. And so the city will be taking cash in lieu of, of those trees to be planted, to be used to plant trees elsewhere in the city. So we had a public information meeting in December of last year. We're here today to receive the feedback from the panel. And then if the panel is supportive of the project, we would work with the applicant to bring our recommendation and bylaw forward to the Land Use and Planning Committee for readings. So with that, I will turn it over to the um, to the architect and landscape architect team. I, I think we have uh, Gordon uh, Gordon Yu, uh, who is I can see on the screen there is a, a registered architect in British Columbia. Uh, we have uh, Gloria Song, I believe, as well, um, both from Atelier uh, Pacific Architecture, and then I see uh, Travis Martin as well from. Um, VDZ and A, so the landscape architecture firm. I'm not sure if we have Michael Liu. Here. Before we go, we, this is time also. We're supposed to, uh, for questions for Greg, if you don't mind. Um, sure. Well, is something in mind in particular? I, I'm sorry, you broke off. Sorry. Uh, you have something in mind in particular? Yeah, Bill, I have clarification from Greg on a few few matters. Is it is it something that the app that would help me cover in the presentation? Yeah, it would help me before we get to the uh, applicant, and then uh, I may have questions under the applicant where Greg will need to to uh, clarify some things too. Um, um, is that okay? Yeah. That's fine. Okay. So um, I saw in some of the documentation, uh, for example, about the parking spaces and some and, and about uh, certain setbacks uh, called talk about variance. And what I was confused about is that you mentioned, this, you didn't mention, but I want to clarify, this is currently zoned R RS1? Yes, that's correct. And and in some of the, one of the documents I saw, uh, there was a mention about, for example, in parking spaces, it's not in the OCP, but it's it's based on RM2. So could you clarify for me about the city's, this is a comprehensive development, so, and you were mentioning about a bylaw a change or, or going to council. Is there a request that this meet RM2 and therefore the setbacks and requirements of and heights under RM2? Uh, no, three, Mr. Chair. It's, it's a good question. Um, what we've done here, Phil, is we've looked at this uh, internally. We've looked at this against the RM2, which is a um, a multifamily residential zone. We've looked at it against the RM2 zone standards. Often what you'll find is that applicants will uh, say that they're largely modeling their design based on one of the standard zone categories of the city, but there may be site specific constraints or, or design related objectives that don't allow them to meet all those standards. In this case, um, staff have kind of said you're very close uh, to this project being designed to meet the RM2, but we do recognize there being deviations. We're OK with those because of the context and the way that they've designed some of the interfaces. Um, but um, yeah, so it's it's a rezoning application. The proposal is from RS1 to what would be a comprehensive development site specific zone. So we we would uh, in creating that zone in mention of the bylaws, we would prepare a bylaw for council. The bylaw would specify that the southern property setback would be X meters, the eastern would be Y and so on. So we would define those on the basis of the project and those details are in the architectural design package. Um, was there another component in the parking, uh, Phil? So the parking well, is a... It was just a comment about RM2. So I will just state that I'm looking at this based on what you've just said, that that it's a comprehensive development that will have its own zoning. But I'm but one of our jobs on the ADP is to look at it relative to city uh, requirements. And before, we've looked at things with respect to heights, for example, against the zoning. So I'm going, just some of my comments later on, uh, will be, uh, uh, just stated right up front, will be relative to RM2. If, um, it's clearly not RS1. Uh, the closest, as you say, is RM2. So I'm going to want to make my comments and, and feedback, as it were, to both the applicant and the city and council relative to RM2 about variances to RM2. Is that okay? Yeah. Or, uh, did you, first of all, is that under, does that make sense? Through you, Mr. Chair, 
Um, respectfully, the responsibility of the panel is to look at the form and character of development against the development permit area guidelines. Um, there's sort of the framework of the Local Government Act is that we look at zoning amendment applications for their conformity to the policies of the official community plan. Like if you really want to kind of get into the the weeds of it. So um, that's OK. I, I appreciate that, I, but it, it, it won't change my comments. Uh, then they'll just be comments based on uh, form and character, independent of whether it meets RM2 or not. That OK, appreciate that. The, the one thing, though, Phil, as you mentioned, height is I would caution the panel if you're concerned that maybe the height is is not meeting up with the RM2 height. We're no. looking at OK, OK, that, that's, just, that's not that that won't be it. But but I think, it, you know, as we are struggling to, to some extent as a panel about our, what our role is, uh, as we've seen in a few a few cases, um, if they meet the current zoning, then we can't question it. They're not meeting the current zoning because they're asking for a different zoning, their own zoning, and therefore I will be able to question it. Thank you. Thank you. So satisfied, thank you. Um, so Greg, uh, if you don't mind, can we um, introduce the proponents again? And if I may, sorry, because I don't have their names here and I don't see it on the, I don't see it on the screen. Uh, sure, Mr. Chair, through you. Um, so we have Gloria Song and Gordon Yu from Atelier Pacific. Um, the applicant's name is Neil Deng. And uh, we have Michael Liu as well from um, Van Home Properties. And who are the who are the owners of the property? And then Travis Martin from um, BDZ and Van der Zand and Associates. So. Uh, and um, just uh, we had a question from one of the panel members offline just with respect to uh, a little bit of confusion with the architectural firm. I believe that there was some correspondence passed along and it was signed by Jesse Aurora, who is an architect, um, <clears throat> but he's not affiliated with this particular firm. He's affiliated with DF Architecture. And so I just wanted to get some clarity from the proponent um, what their relationship is to this firm, just so that with when we're dealing with architects, it's always about clarity to the public and who we're dealing with and what the interests are. So um, if the proponents would like to present, I would ask them first finally to introduce themselves and who and, and which firm they're actually representing and their affiliation to the AIPC, please. Um, sorry, it's uh, hi, uh, as you all know, my name is Gordon, um, registered architect AIBC. Um, just to clarify that um, issue, so um, about a years back, um, Jesse Aurora, registered architect, um, purchased uh, APA Atelier Pacific Architecture uh, from our previous principal, uh, Brian Shigatomi. So now Jesse Aurora does is the principal for both DF Architecture as well as Atelier Pacific Architecture. I appreciate that. Yeah, there was just a bit of confusion. We're always trying to make sure that we're following the rules that, that we have to, right? So I appreciate that. Thank you, Gordon. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so in, in this case, um, if there's no further questions regarding um, that aspect, um, I, we can just uh, start sharing our screen and then we'll go through the, um, uh, the design. Wonderful. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. Just uh, bear with me for a few seconds. I do apologize. My face will be a little bit skewed. I'm using a dual screen situation here. Um, so I will be looking at uh, my screen to my right. Can everyone see the um, uh, PDF? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Um, uh, thank you everyone uh, for taking the time today to uh, join us at this ADP. Um, I'll do another quick introduction again um, of the um, people involved in the project and who are here with us today. Um, we have the landscape consultant, uh, Travis, from Vander Salmon Associates, um, our client, Vander Home Properties. And then uh, myself, uh, Gordon, and my colleague, um, Gloria, from Atelier Pacific Architecture. Um, I'll try not to get into too much uh, detail of the um, items that uh, were already went over by Greg. Um, so I'll do a really, for those items that uh, Greg already did a, a wonderful job um, going through, I'll kind of skip through them a little bit more in, in um, the uh, attempt to save a bit of time. Um, so uh, the proposed project is at 1453 State Road. And um, as Greg has already done a pretty 
a thorough um, run around the site um, just to show you here the um, site plan that we have. This is our site right here. And then moving down the we have some photos as well of the surrounding properties. Um, they're quite similar to the ones we're shown by Greg. And I'll just fly through them a little bit. And then this is just a streetscape of showing the um, proposed uh, project um, in relationship to the surrounding uh, neighbors. So the program, as Greg had mentioned, uh, is a townhouse development with 21 um, units. It was previously a four-story, uh, 50 unit apartment building, um, but in response to public feedback, we've since changed it to a townhouse form of development to 23 units, and then it was further reduced to the current proposal, which is the 21 unit uh, townhouse. Um, as Greg has mentioned, it, it complies to the uh, OCP's uh, urban neighborhood designation for a low rise building, uh, allowing a FAR of 1.5 with a four story um, heights. Uh, we're currently proposing uh, three story buildings with an FAR of uh, 0.954. So the slides here show uh, in a section through the site in relationship to the uh, adjacent properties. Um, we tried our best to um, follow the natural landscape of the site, so not changing too much um, of the grading. And here it is in relationship to the adjacent uh, multifamily as well as the adjacent commercial. Um, this is uh, just the OCP compliance. And then for uh, the site, um, so we're proposing the 21 units. Um, it's divided into four blocks. Blocks one uh, that is fronting State Road, uh, blocks two and three in the interior here, and then blocks four up here in the north. Um, vehicular access comes from the site entrance in the northeast side. Um, as Greg has mentioned, we did work with the city quite a bit um, to pull back the building here to provide a queuing area in the front here uh, for um, to improve traffic. And that kind of opened up the opportunity to place a uh, outdoor amenity in the front here, just providing a little bit more green space um, for the streetscape, as well as uh, acting as a bit of a buffer between the municipal sidewalk and the um, end unit uh, of block four. Um, we have a traffic study that went through all of our roads to, conf to confirm a conformance to turning radiuses required by fire trucks, uh, garbage trucks, as well as uh, general traffic. Um, all units have side-by-side -side, uh, uh, parking garages, which can accommodate two cars. And uh, as Greg has mentioned, we are providing uh, visitor par parking spaces, uh, four spaces, one of which is a uh, van accessible over here. So the other parking spaces are over here uh, for the visitors and here. And for bicycle parking, uh, we are providing the five class twos, um, two, uh, one, oh, sorry, two, two, and one over here. And then within each of the uh, garages, there's also space for the one class one uh, bicycle parking. Um, I'll touch on this really quickly. So there is a pedestrian access, or, or sorry, a pedestrian paved pathway that provides access from State Road in the north here, as well one in the south, and then in tier one that provides uh, a connection to State Road um, and then access to uh, blocks three and four. Um, the architectural aesthetics, sorry, let me just flip the screen here. Um, oh, pardon me. Um, the uh, roof, this is a rooftop amenity or a rooftop patio plan. Um, just want to highlight once again that uh, through public feedback, we have pulled back the uh, rooftop patios on block three and the end of block four, um, just to give a bit more space and buffer to the um, duplexes on this side. Um, we have proposed or will be proposing um, mechanic or sorry, privacy screens um, just to improve the, the, the privacy between the two and use as a visual barrier. Uh, owners of the units here can choose to um, install planters themselves to improve the uh, privacy. Uh, this is colored elevation um, showing the architectural aesthetic that we're going to that we're trying to uh, propose. Um, we are proposing a modern style with rectilinear forms um, just to create uh, clean lines and organized lines. Um, we have a vertical stair element um, over here, which provides access to the rooftop patios and this we hoped to kind of create an undulating roof line just to break up the massing, as well as to create some visual interest um, to the facades. Uh, we have 
proposed a sloped roof for that uh, stair element um, right as the, the um, slope or the, uh, the stairs come up here. We kind of tried to keep this like really tight uh, to the requirements of uh, BCBC. Um, and we have propo proposed uh, glazed guards um, for the rooftop uh, patio just to lower the uh, visual height of the building itself. For the front of the units, uh, we are proposing a um, balcony space with uh, posts. And this helps, you know, uh, give just more visual interest to the facades as well as uh, identify each of the units. Uh, each unit has uh, large windows for natural light and ventilation. Uh, in terms of color, we chose uh, neutral grays and contrasted them with uh, warmer wood tones. Uh, we do have two color schemes that I will show. So this is the scheme number one. And then this is scheme number two, um, just to give more variety to um, the facades. In terms of materials, we are um, proposing all non-combustible materials, uh, including cementitious lap siding and uh, ship lap siding, just to give texture and create shadow lines. Um, in the next page, you'll see the distribution of the two color schemes. We try to alternate it throughout the site. And then the next pages, you'll, oh, I'm sorry. And this, this is a material samples board for the proposed finishes. Um, these are some examples of uh, previous projects uh, we've done um, with the with kind of the same um, as architectural aesthetics. Um, in another project, we've also proposed um, the rooftop amenities, uh, which is um, kind of popping up on a lot of uh, projects that we're involved with. And then these are the general plans. Um, each of the units are ground orientated with three bedroom units. Um, square footage is range from uh, 1200 to 1800 square feet. These are the black and white uh, elevations. So uh, just to show the uh, some of the side elevations that we are proposing. And quick sections. And then these are uh, some shadow studies that we've done. And then lastly, just to um, recap for the change in these schemes, our previous scheme, as you can see on the left, was the four-story apartment building with the 50 units. And we've since uh, moved on towards the uh, townhouse form of development um, at the 21 units. And at this point, I'll pass it off to Travis from VDZ to go over the uh, landscape. Hey, thank you, Greg and Gordon. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes. Yes, okay, good. All right, um, uh, I think you are pretty well versed in the site right now, but I mean, third time's a charm, so I'll uh, take you through one more time and hopefully touch on a couple things that you haven't heard yet. Um, I'll start with tree preservation. As it was mentioned earlier, um, we are um, removing all on-site trees. Mostly um, they're not long-lived or high quality, but we are focusing on retaining all of the trees surrounding the site. Uh, that includes on the west boundary an existing hedge um, that buffers the existing du duplexes. And on the south, especially the southwest corner of our site, um, there are seven black pines, two cedars, and one Norway maple um, that we are retaining. And we're working with Woodridge Tree to make sure that um, we have the necessary offsets to ensure uh, they're preserved through construction. There's also a small hedge along what you can see there is an existing parking space on the first half of the bottom of our site that is also on the neighboring site that we're preserving. So uh, we're keeping their hedge and adding a bit of our own there to to help with that, that buffering. And so, yeah, we'd like to keep all of the mature trees intact so that our site just fits in with that once it arrives. There's also two offsite trees on the boulevard, a Persian ironwood and a paper bark maple. I apologize, they're hard to see. They're tiny circles in the boulevard, but we're not affecting that space and we'll be protecting them during construction. 
Uh, moving on to the design, uh, along State Road, you can see we have five townhouse units that front onto State Road. And uh, there's, it's hard to see here, but there's a hatched area. It's a two meter wide right of way, which is a potential road widening in the future. So we're ensuring that we're putting our trees behind that um, so that if it is taken for a widening and more sidewalk, that our landscape will remain unaffected. And we're using a fairly fastidious tree there, Armstrong maple, also very hardy, so that uh, we think it's it's appropriate for that location. Um, and then again, it was mentioned we've we've moved our amenity, our main amenity site uh, space to the front corner of the site. So we feel like there's a lot of benefits to that, just um, visibility, um, just visual, you know, socialization, people seeing each other talking, and it also kind of opens up our site to the street a bit more. Um, there's also a, an amenity space in the top corner, the northwest, um, just a very small sitting area with some ornamental trees and a bench so that people can go outside and, and just sit and read or, or hang out with a friend. Also, what's important about the site is the uh, walkability of it. I know that's been mentioned already, but uh, we've got sidewalks linking in the north um, along the frontage of the six units there and we've got a sidewalk linking in from the south that reaches up through our core units there to blocks two and three uh, and they all have their own little frontage there you can see a section on um, the bottom right here that shows that interface there's a bit of a step between them as we've worked to keep with the grades and and minimize offsets of the property line to our neighbors and so it's kind of an interesting um, interface there and we're providing a hedge on the lower side to help improve privacy um, as you walk along that pathway and and just nice planting in general through there and that sort of interfaces with the front doors and the balconies um, and that pathway also links down through the south and then up across and through the north so it's it's a very well linked site we've tried to add in interesting paving permeable paving and light as mentioned so allowing infiltration and uh, low heat retention. And also those act as uh, visual cues for uh, vehicles to, to drive slower. So they kind of act as that space to, to move across and feel safe. Um, in, the, in the front entry driveway there, you'll see we have our mail kiosk and uh, one of the bike racks. And we've got a couple other just on the corner along the that north drive aisle. So we've kind of spaced them out in a high visibility location so that uh, yeah, when people friends show up, they're they're close to their to their destination and they're not worried about their bikes. Um, finally, a few more things about trees here. Um, yeah, mostly fastidious trees like a European dock beach, a few uh, ornamental trees, the magnolia, and at our main amenity here, we've got a, a pin oak. So that'll be a kind of our focal tree over this space. Um, I think I'll switch to the next slide now. This is a zoom in on the corner amenity space there. Um, it's it's mostly a toddler focused space. Uh, for young, new young families, and we've got a sandbox, small deck, and a little playhouse, uh, a winding path, and a, a bench there. So, I mean, whether uh, parents and child go out there and spend some time, or whether anybody just wants to take a rest, it's just a pleasant spot, shaded, and uh, yeah, accessible. As well as we've put a, a frontage, like a fence around it to contain it, um, so that you don't have to worry about your kids, you know, running out across the boulevard. Uh, some time when you're accidentally texting instead of watching. Um, and yeah, I think the, the only thing I haven't mentioned is the, the rooftop. Again, I don't think there's actually outdoor amenity requirements for, for individual units in the townhouse zone, but um, the rooftops are great amenity spaces and they're very large for townhouse uh, outdoor amenity, full sun, opportunities for a giant patio, personal urban agriculture. And I think, yeah, that's a great um, aspect of this project so that uh, yeah, everybody's getting that necessary sun and outdoor space while yeah, still having good views and, and some common outdoor many um, areas to enjoy together. And I think that's everything with the landscape. And we'll wait for questions. That's great. Thank you, Travis. Um, so unless uh, Gordon and Gloria, there's anything else for you? Um, I'll just let you know how the rest of the meeting is meant to unfold. And so as you probably know from having attended ADP before, we're going to go through our individual panel members with questions and solely with questions, panel members, please. Um, I'm
going to go in a particular order so that nobody's missed. So um, those who are up front, you might have to think quickly. Um, there will be an opportunity to come back to you if you do um, if you do recall something after the fact. And then we'll keep that order through for comments um, at the end. So I'll be calling on individuals. Um, so firstly, um, I would ask um, Paul, Vice Chair Paul Rust, if you have any particular questions for the architects or for the landscape architect on this proposal. Yeah, on the landscape architecture, I was just wondering two things. One, uh, was the pickup of garbage discussed or, or anything like that uh, having to do with garbage disposal? That's question one. Question two is, did you consider using that permeable paving throughout the project or only in those two areas? Well, Travis, if you mean. Yes, um, so are we supposed to respond to each question individually? Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, that's okay, correct. Sure. So the questions will be direct, so. Okay, um, in terms of the permeable paving throughout, we haven't discussed making it entirely permeable. At this point, it's the the yellow pavers you see on the plan, which are in the in the drive aisle and in the visitor parking spaces. And regarding garbage, I think I'll leave that to, to APA to see um, if they'd like to respond to that. Uh, for the garbage um, access, it is curbside pickup, but I believe this will be done with the uh, strata. So, so is there a staging area then planned or? Um, no, it will be this, it will be curbside pickup. So it would be a smaller private uh, company doing this with a smaller vehicle coming to each of the units and picking up the garbage. Okay. I would just add, uh, Mr. Chair, if if I may, uh, through you. Uh, we did require, as part of the technical review, a look at a swath analysis to make sure a small uh, garbage vehicle could actually navigate the laneways between the townhome units. So the intention is that, um, as Gordon mentioned, that you would have not, not not curbside in the sense of picking it up at the street. It would be that you have a small vehicle entering into the property, going all the way down to the end of the laneways, picking up the individual garbage bins, dropping them in the in the. It's fairly common practice, I think, for most of the townhome developments. But that would be how garbage is dealt with. Okay, well, uh, uh, to Mr. Chair, uh, <clears throat> Paul again here. Uh, yes. I might add that the input from the city staff, as described by Greg, has been very, very good. I think you've managed to help uh, make this project as good a design as it is, and I'm really quite pleased with it by and large. So, but I'll have other comments later. If that's okay. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Uh, moving on to Rushir. Rushir, any particular questions um, to the proponents? Yes, uh, I'll start with uh, something similar to what Phil had asked. Uh, on this, uh, I just went through uh, the OCP as well, and I don't see the recommendations of setbacks that have been proposed. There have been required setbacks on the drawings as pointed out on architectural drawings. They've talked about uh, a meter and a half to the front, uh, six meters to the back, four meters to the north, and three meters to the south. So I don't know how those setbacks were taken, number one. And uh, number two, the dedication, two meter dedication that we see up front, is it only for boulevard or road widening, or how is it going to be? Because uh, a meter and a half setback towards the front with a block facing that rather looks rather imposing. Uh, that's my first question about zoning and uh, setbacks. Let's let's yeah, let's get those answered and then we'll go along. So Greg, if you yeah, okay, okay. thank you, three, Mr. Chair. So the. Um, Whenever we receive an application for a rezoning uh, into a comprehensive development zone, it's essentially the applicant is making a making a case to support deviation from what would otherwise be a standard zone category. So in this case, we, uh, as I had mentioned earlier in our initial technical comments, we had uh, looked at the project against the RM2 uh, zone provisions and sort of challenged the applicant to, to convince us as to why uh, they couldn't just design it to fit within the RM2. And so to your points, for sure. Um, and I'm getting a bit of feedback. Joe, I'm going to mute you if you don't mind. Um, 
Sorry. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we looked at the RM2 zone standards against what they were proposing. So to your point, Rashir, let's say off a of state road, the, the RM2 zone standard would have uh, normally required three meters off of that. Um, it's six sorry, meters. Sorry, six, six it's meters. Six on, it's six on all sides, front, rear, and interior uh, lot line, not abutting the lane is, uh, yeah. C three and four, three and four. So yeah, it's a uh, three meters interior lot line, which is which is yeah, and uh, other one interior side lot line is five meters. So six meters at the back, six meters in the front, and yeah, yeah, okay. So six meters off a of state and six meters off of the western property line, which is the rear property line. That's what the RM two would require. And then it's three meters off an interior side yard, which would be the north of the south. However, if you uh, it's if you have um, windows on those walls that look into a habitable room, then the setback is increased to five meters. So what they're proposing is on the north boundary, so uh, which is it would be an interior side area. They're proposing four, again where the standard would be three, but if you have a habitable room. With with glazing facing the property line, then it would be five. So it's it's let's say it's five in this case because you'd have bedrooms uh, likely with with windows facing north. Uh, that would be the RM2 standard, but they're proposing four. Staff are generally comfortable with the four because of the way that they programmed the space. So they've got some landscaping to provide some screening and, and buffering. Uh, they also have, if you recall some of the images, the interface is not. Currently, like you're looking into someone's backyard, the interface is that you're looking at the back wall of a, of a commercial plaza. It's not to say that it's going to be there forever, but even uh, what is permitted by the current zoning in that space is a commercial use. So normally we would want to ensure that people are not looking from one bedroom directly into another on the opposite side of a property line. And so we're satisfied uh, that the design in this case at that interface is, is appropriate or is at least acceptable at four from say five. On um, the on the west, you've got the six meter setback. It's being met. They've got the laneway there. It's providing some spacing. We have also uh, required the introduction of a cedar fence along that property line. There is currently a chain length fence and some hedging that's kind of growing through. Uh, but we have a uh, cedar fence to provide a little more permanence to the to the screening. On the south, uh, you can see there we've got a three meter setback. Again, there's a fairly substantial setback to the residential apartment building to the south. There are some large mature trees that the applicant is intending to, to protect. And again, there's some plantings proposed as well. So we were comfortable that the um, compatibility of the use would be maintained with a three meter setback. And then lastly, I think Rashir, the, the main point of concern really is along State Road because you've got well, 1.5, whereas if we were modeling this off of the RM2 zone, it would be six. Uh, keep in mind that we are taking a two meter wide road dedication. So let's say um, what we would, the way we tend to treat that is we're treating it as, as if it's a 3.5 meter setback um, because getting the land allows the city to program the space, to put in some buffers, some widened sidewalks, some, in fact, there's an intention here along State Road to have a bicycle lane as well. Um, so we're looking at the programming of the, the, the landscaping in front of the building. Uh, they've got uh, porches in a lot of practices. It's, it's good to try to bring the building closer to the street as long as you're not doing so in an overwhelming way. These are three story townhomes. We do not think the setback is going to overwhelm the streetscape and with the widening, we think it's appropriate. Okay. Uh, can we go to, do you mind? Can we go to, can we go to, can we go, exactly sorry, can we, can we go to the landscape plan because there is a little bit of a misleading the graphics here, everything being green. Thank you, thank you. Now, my next question is, I see uh, the winding sidewalk on the state road and the boulevard with those cut off angles, chamfers in the corner. Has the civil uh, consultant been engaged? The to, to make sure the curbs, everything is aligned, grades are meeting, and all that stuff has been taken care of? Sorry, could you please repeat the question? You kind of broke up a little bit. 
sorry uh, i just wanted to know from the applicants whether civil consultants have been retained because out here i don't see any curb lines the site the winding sidewalk it does not seem to be consistent there are some angular corners which doesn't seem likely and uh, and and the grades and la, uh, street lights all that stuff have have everything been handled uh, finished floor elevation site grades so has civil consultant been engaged uh, yeah we do have a civil uh, consultant involved in the project and uh, the landscape i can so this is a better uh, representation of the civil drawing underlay that's um, in the civil drawing from the consultant that we have. The landscape drawings probably remove them just for simplicity. Okay, okay uh, once back to the landscape drawing, please, if possible. So uh, to the landscape architect, the, the Armstrong maple, is shown uh, in the one and a half meter setback. Yeah, it's 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 shown uh, outside of the dedication. Seems to be planted in the one and a half meter setback. Uh, is there a reason why it can't be brought, uh, put in the boulevard two meter dedication area or whatever? Because seems rather tight to plant uh, uh, Armstrong maple in that one and a half meters. Yes, Mr. Chair, if I, if I may, and don't want to sort of overstep with uh, the the, consult, the the applicants, um, but Rashir, the um, the review of the boulevard design will be undertaken later. Uh, okay. So we typically what we would do is um, once we get to a position of having council support for the project at third reading. Uh, that's when we would ask for detailed civil design, and that's when we would also be looking at the boulevard design. So um, we wouldn't want the applicant to be proposing plantings on city property without the city um, being more sort of in charge of that. So the focus uh, typically at this stage would just be at the, on the programming of the private lands. But um, your point's well taken. If if you have a concern with the plantings as proposed on on the private property, I'd like to try to sort that out, but um, we'd be working with the applicant moving forward sure. on the boulevard. Sure. Those were my questions. I, I'll, I'll reserve other things for the comments. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Rashir. And moving to Nicholas, questions to the proponents, please. Um, I think lots of people before me asked the same question I had, but I think maybe the only question I other things I've been looking at was maybe the what wasn't really spoken about too much was the unit mix in the development. Um, I was just going through the plans here again, sorry on the side here. See that they're all pretty much I think building one. Sorry, I forgot my numbers now on the building numbers. Um, but the building on the very top of the, of the page, I think they're all two bedrooms and everyone else seems to be about three bedrooms if if that's correct. From the applicant, um, I'm just wondering. Really, it's kind of maybe an open question actually to Greg and as well to the applicant, whether there was a requirement for actually more diverse unit types for the development. Um, for instance, in terms of size, I know like you have your corner suite that's a bit bigger, but other than the corner pieces, was there a requirement or discussion whether a uh, more variation in suite sizes uh, had to be provided for the development? I can I start and maybe, maybe the applicant yeah. can speak to um, their own approach to their design, but there's not a requirement or a policy uh, that the city has established that speaks to variability in the in the uh, unit size in a townhome development. We do have a policy that speaks to a desire for family friendly housing in um, multifamily uh, apartment style more so uh, to have more three bedroom and two bedroom, but um, not in not in this case. Right. OK, I guess so. It's more of a department policy. Um, I guess it's not really. I guess it's more of a question whether, you know, the market, I guess, tells us what what to do, but these kind of things. But I guess it's more just a question whether that was in, well, that was involved in, the, I guess, the design process. Other than that, actually, I'll save most of my most of my I think for for the comments later. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, moving on to Phil. Phil, uh, questions to OK, thank you. 
Sorry, um, sorry, I had to, someone had to give me a note very quickly, but uh, I, Nicholas, um, the, all of the units are three bedroom, um, so there is no two bedroom units. Um, and in terms of, and we do have a, quite a range of uh, square footage from uh, 1200 square footage, uh, 1200 square feet to 800 square foot uh, units. Perfect. They're all, okay, I just saw, I saw a sound that had only had two bedrooms up on the upper floors, but I guess maybe there's another, another hiding Another another bedroom maybe in the on the ground floor, I didn't. I'm uh, sorry. Which maybe which floor plan are you looking at? Uh, 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 on block. block one, building three. That's right. Block one, third level. Oh, okay. Uh, let me just. Flip. It says it shows two bedrooms, but maybe you're also considering the den on the ground floor as a bedroom. Block one. On page seventeen, or sorry, page eighteen. It is here. Block one. What's block one? Oh, because of. But yeah, you do have. Oh, sorry. You do have another bedroom down on the main floor. Sorry. Ignore that. Then. Oh, they all, all your other buildings had all the bedrooms, but only on the upper floor. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had a bedroom on the main floor there. And and sorry to interject, um, Gord, just for clarity, I'm looking at block three plans, and they appear to have four bedrooms. Perhaps. Yeah, not. they're all three or four bedroom. I missed the. All of the interior ones are four bedroom. One on the main living. Oh, the yeah. Apologies, I misspoke. Great. And I guess, sorry, again, I guess going back to Greg, there's no requirement then to do a fully accessible unit then under the OEC, under the requirements for the townhomes. Mm -hmm. uh, three, Mr. Chair, no, not under the planning requirements. I'm not sure if there'd be any requirement in the, in the BC building code. Uh, for a certain percentage to be accessible, but we're not there yet. I, I think that that's something that we'd like to pursue in the future, is setting a minimum number of uh, adaptable and accessible units. Okay. Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, Greg, uh, sorry, Phil, back to you with questions to the proponents. Okay, thank you. Good. That's a good segue because I, the, my first question was going to be about accessibility, so we can skip that. Um, I'd like to go, it goes back to the questions about setbacks and privacy. Um, and what I'd like to do, if we can go back to the uh, landscape plan that you showed a few minutes ago, right there. That, 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 uh, okay, let's start there. Uh, first of all, on block three, I, I appreciate that on block three on the roofs that you moved back. So basically the people on block three are getting about 60% of their roof because of presumably a barrier or a wooden fence or something being built between them and the west the west side? Uh, yes, so this was in response to um, public feedback uh, regarding privacy to the uh, west uh, neighbors. So what we did was in the rooftop, let me just go to the, uh, the rooftop plan here um, in the front. Yeah, my basic question is what is happening on the roof at that on that west side? Is it just a flat roof of some sort? Yes. So it would be a paper, it would be a papered roof. And then the the half that's facing the west side is just left as as a uh, typical roofing, but we do have a physical barrier here that uh, residents cannot be on this side just for the privacy buffer. So my question is, because we're supposed to do questions rather than comments right now, my question sure. is, yeah. if you can, if you're having a fence there, mm -hmm. there would be like a four or five foot fence or something. Um, typically, I we go four feet for like privacy, but then what we can do and we've done before in the past is a metal. Uh, it's not really a fence, but like a metal yeah. um, privacy screen with glass, so you can still get natural light in there. But it's more, but it's obscured glass, so it's it's more of a privacy, but still um, try to achieve best of two worlds kind of thing. So based on you know looking down on did was there a site for you to decide that you would take off? Look, there's almost no ground. Um, space for people. The, the, it's, the, the roofs are really important uh, outdoor space. Mm -hmm. did, what did you do to decide that it was about 40% was lost as opposed to moving it further west? Was there a, an analysis of site views uh, to, the, to the homeowners on the west? 
No, in, in that sense, it was more we were trying to give as much as possible in terms of the buffer because there was a lot of uh, public feedback from that, like in that respect. Um, but to your point, uh, we can definitely investigate further of where that line should be um, and, and to give, you know, more to the resident of the uh, unit. Okay. okay, thank you. I'm trying to, trying to be efficient here. Thank you. That answers the question. Um, can you walk now back to the, the setbacks and privacy on the ground? I'd like to walk because there were various documents that that were Dr. Fall because of the different uh, times that you were you've made amendments, changes to things. So some documents said certain things about hedges and about fences, which you were going to keep. And now I'm hearing something different. So I'd like to literally walk around and ask for you to be very clear on the north side is. To, with your point, the, the cursor, I know where the property line is, I, and I can read on my screen here to some extent, but I'd like you to walk us around with what is being planted and between the planting and the land on the north side, and we'll go all the way around the new landscape. What's the width of that? These are, well, take, just take us around, including the space, the width of the, of the, um, of the, I'll call it the sidewalks that are in the document, starting on the north side. So right there. Would you like me to take you through? Yes, I can do that. And um, I'll need, uh, need meters too, because it goes back to the DPA, the, the, um, uh, the guidelines uh, that I want to refer to at some point. But could you go, but yeah, mm. walk us around. If there's a fence, how high, what's the plantings, what's the width of the walkway? Okay, um, the width of the walkway, I am not 100% sure right now. It's between 1.2 and 1.5 meters, but we'll need to check that. Um, we don't have an official planting plan yet, but due to the thickness of this zone, which is about between 2.5 to 3 feet or 0.75 to 0.9 meters, we'll be planting a U hedge there. Um, so that it can grow mature over a, a long period of time and be maintained at a, a thin width. Uh, we're not planning to put a fence in right now as is a wall for most of this um, edge, um, but we, we yeah, could. Property line, not yep. above where your cursor is. I don't know. I'm seeing, yeah. Not, yeah. yeah. not on the north property line. Um, yeah, unless, unless it's requested because right, uh, there is a wall right there. There's no fence proposed, but there are hedges. Yes. And about, and I think you're right from what I was reading about 1.2 or 1. Uh, 1.22 meters. I want to uh, yeah. clarify yeah, that right. is the width of the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. That okay. looks correct. Okay. And so then on the west property line, um, we have again some hedging along, and we will be putting a fence in along that whole west boundary. We have a very narrow bed and a, a small wall um, to make up the difference still. It'll be a, a block wall. Um, no, no, sorry, and, I didn't hear. You will or will not be putting a fence? We will be. Will be, okay, thank you. Yeah. And, and that comes along down to the south where we'll continue with more planting along the inside of the, the site in the down bottom corner. Um, and, just and probably lower shrub planting corner. along that edge on the inside there. Sorry, sorry, I'm interrupting to, to, to keep it moving because of my question. There's a script. My understanding from a document, there's a chain link fence there that you're keeping, or are you taking that and building a a oh, right. wooden fence? Yeah, I guess that's a question for this. Um, we are. Yeah, you're right. There's a discrepancy here. We're on the one side. We suggest we're building a privacy fence on the other side to tie into the existing chain link. Right. So I think our plan is to there's a chain link along the lower south portion and then it goes up in that jog in the middle bottom and it ends um, around there. And that's where we're going to build a privacy fence for that first 60 percent of the south property line. Um, back to the street. Okay, so no no fence currently planned on the 40% to the left on the south side. No. Okay, no. I just want clarity, that's all. Uh, so yeah. I, I'm pushing you. So now can you move 
uh, to the to the State Street side and between the property line. It, I mean, the idea of the of the widening of the road changed when it yes. changes. It's it's almost what you know, what version are we with or without the widening? But with the property line, what's the width? I think it's two meters if, or less between the property line and the and the tr where the trees are being built. Well, the we have a one and a half meter setback from the street um, from the road dedication, which is two meters wide. So, um, if that's a one and a half meter space, the trees are situated about a foot and a bit inwards. So, so there's still about a bit more than a meter off the building. They're as close to property line as we can make them, so that the root ball stays on site when we plant them, yeah. um, basically. Okay. Now, where if if State Street is widened. This, I guess, for Greg or somebody, is if it is widened, where would the curb, including a, and you mentioned about a bike lane, where would the curb be relative to the property line? So, through you, Mr. Chair, I can try to find the specifics. Just bear with me a second. Uh, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me here, Phil, but we're taking the widening. The typical cross section is that you have the property line. Uh, we then get the sidewalk in. It's typically a 1.8 meter wide sidewalk. We then have a, a boulevard being uh, 1.8 to 2 meters. And, and then you have the curb. So part of the intention is that we're trying to get um, a planted strip between the sidewalk and the road. So part of the the future road cross section that we're we're trying to achieve um, is to have sidewalk planted boulevard, sidewalk planted boulevard, and then the curb. So there would be at least three point eight meters to the curb. Three point eight with the sidewalk. That includes the sidewalk and plantings. Yeah. So what does this does this allow that? So if you visualize this, and to Rashir's point earlier about not having civil designs, um, you'd have the property line where um, Travis has mentioned that they've really done the programming within a tight space in front of the building and the, in the future property line. We've now taken the widening as a result of this project. We're able to then, within the revised design, have a um, the new property line have a sidewalk. So again, 1.8 meter wide sidewalk, planted boulevard, and then the curb, and then potentially have the opportunity for additional on-street parking. There is on-street parking there now. You can see it's a very irregular um, sidewalk design. And, and so this is don't zoom into the into State Street, just the one of the areas on State Street right there. Yeah. So everybody can could you zoom even more? Oh, I see. It says two meter road road dedication. So essentially, that would be the sidewalk. Yeah. Essentially. And now go down a little bit so I can see where the where the where the street what the the the, the entrance is, and the tree plantings. So what's the width of the the green area along uh, right there? The green no, uh, on State Street. What's the width of that between, yeah, between the sidewalk and the house? That's about 1.5, 1 1.5 meters. Okay, thank you. No, that's the width of that, of the, oh, it's about the same, the width of the of the entranceway, but it's about the same as the green space. Okay, thank you, but that's, that's just in terms of questions. Thank you very All much. All right, thank, thank you, Bill. And Faye? 
Do you have any questions for the proponent? Uh, you might be on mute. Sorry, I'm not. Hello. Can you hear me? Hi. We can hear. Hi. Yep, we've got you. Sorry. I do have a couple of comments. Uh, my first comment is um, I agree with Phil in terms of the rooftop uh, for the block three, if we can just zone in there. Why it's almost half of that rooftop is designated as, you know, being blocked off. And I think maybe they could look at an option where they decrease that because it's it's quite like if you look at the rooftop server for the rest of the blocks they have a nice big space and this block here if I was going to purchase it I I would have real second thoughts about it so uh, I think it, they need to sorry, look at just to interject sorry just interject we're just in the question period right now are there any specific questions oh, okay, uh, for sorry. the group that's yeah, okay do, we're I, going to comment out have one, yeah one question I do have it's regarding the uh common amenity space so if you could zone into that i have concern with where it's located which is right at the main entrance onto state so anybody coming in to that development purchasing with young children um they may want to look at relocating that because state is a very very busy road so it's right at the entrance. I think it's a great space, but I think it maybe there should be consideration of moving it. If I may respond to that, sure. um, one thing that we were talking about earlier today was we, we do have a fence around it, but perhaps we enclose that entire space with gates and we could even set that fencing gate back where it meets that internal road edge so that um, there's a bit more space there and they open inwards and uh, and that way, you know, it's a contained space, and when you leave, you look, and uh, yeah. Yeah, you're going to have to do something because small children, I mean, that, that's a very, very busy road, state road. And you wouldn't want to have, you know, and, and actually people coming into the development as well, it's right there in the entrance. Um, the other question that I wanted just to clarify was the distance between block one and two in terms of um, uh, garbage pickup recycling. It's quite narrow. So if everyone's got their recycling bins out and garden gatherings, et cetera, backing out of your garage, you're almost gonna back into somebody else's recycling bin. So if you look at the distance, there's no driveways in this development. So you, you, you pull up and you've got to go right into your garage. So once you put your garbage and uh, bins out and recycling, it's going to be quite crowded. So backing up a car, it, I can see it being, um, being a little bit chaotic on, on garbage recycling day. That's all for that particular, those, those two blocks. Uh, yeah, just, that, oh, sorry, sorry. No, go ahead, please. Um, there is a small driveway uh, for blocks one and two, about um, three to four feet, um, where you could you could feasibly fit the recycling and garbage bins. However, um, yes, that is a very good point. Um, in term, yeah, the only thing I can comment on is in terms of like you know the the garbage turning and the garbage traffic. We have a traffic study um, done for those, so then we do conform to the required turning radiuses of garbage. Okay. okay. Thank you, Gordon. Any other questions, Faith? No, that that was it. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Um, so I've just got a couple of questions uh, for the applicants. Um, uh, I'll just kind of go in order. They might be out of order, but um, can you please go to an elevation? Any elevation? Any goal? Block principle I'm just starting to think about the design and looking forward to comments. Um, so yeah, any one of those is fine. So when I and can you zoom in on any one of the windows uh, within the brown area within the wood type side? 
So those are windows to on the lower floors, typically to the living area upstairs. Those are bedrooms. Um, has this been developed any further than this? I don't see those as operable windows, for example, um, for the bedrooms. Uh, yeah, those will be operable. Um, so then we typically do the side panels uh, or the sorry, the side um, sections of the um, the triplet. They are um, typically either a casement or we do an awning at the top. I would prefer the casement because not everyone's as tall as I am. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Thank you. Um, and and just if you could kindly go to the site plan. Um, I'm looking at um, what I'm look, wanting to ask you about is the distance uh, between blocks three and block four. It can be on the landscape plan or anything. Just to be, that that's perfect. So. What thought? So when when I look at, I don't want you to flip to it, but when I look at the cross section, there is essentially the the face, the, the east face of block three and the west face of block two, appear to be about twenty feet apart, which is about the length of a car spot. Right? Is that correct? You're talking about, sorry, uh, you're talking about in between blocks two and three, um, that interior pathway, correct? Yeah, I'm talking about face to face on the buildings, particularly where the bedrooms are. Yeah, that's uh, that would be the approximately. Yeah, approximately. Yeah, I, yeah, I can see it there. So my question is, what thought was given to the privacy? Because I can see on the floor plans on block two and block three, that block three will actually be looking down from their master bedroom into and onto the master bed of block two. So have you given any thought to? We've talked about privacy to the westerly neighbors from the deck, but I think that this is more of an intimate privacy. Kind of question. Your immediate neighbors. It's unfortunate because block three is slightly elevated, which gives them uh, high ground on the view. So yeah, that's perfect. If you zoom in on there. Right. So you're not showing there. You're showing it through the stairwell. But you can imagine that if you look at block three. Um, in that passageway, they're literally looking down into the bedroom of lot two, and it's not even like a kid's bedroom; it's their master bedroom, master bedroom. Have you given that any additional thought in terms of how they might achieve some privacy? Um, let me just go over quickly. Sorry, bear with me yeah. a second. Um, so there are trees that um, we are providing as a buffer between the two units. Um, however, the and there the two units are a bit staggered um, in terms of where the windows are uh, located on the frontage. So if you look over here, where typically the windows for the higher um, levels would be on this side, which would catch like the they're they're a bit offset is where I'm trying to get at. Um, and there is an elevational difference between the two bedrooms. Yeah, and that elevational difference gives a better view from block three down. So it's, it's if you go to the plan, you'll understand. What you're the problem is, is that many developments these days end up with those roll down shades, um, which are partially they're translucent. Right? And people forget that when it's light out or dark out that they that they react quite differently. So can you go to a floor plan for a second? Yep. So perhaps block two would be the best. One more down. Does block sorry, does block one work for you? No, or? no, no, it has to be block two, two or block three. All right. Yeah. Block two is better because yeah, that's the one I disagree. Sorry, we're gonna have to switch another PDF because this one doesn't have all the floor plans in them. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. So block two. You're almost there. So. Right there. Perfect. Um, so if you zoom in on the third floor. And we can see all of the bedrooms along this along the south face of north and south. Right, right there. So that was that's my concern. Stagger or not, you're looking right into the master bedroom in every one of those instances. And even if you're off a foot or two left or right, I don't know how much impact that's going to have. And then ultimately, if your neighbor looking down on you, it actually puts you at quite a disadvantage for privacy. So I just wanted to know if you had taken that into account or have any sort of mitigating. Uh, you know, ideas um, from a design perspective. 
Um, from a design perspective, um, we I personally haven't done uh, or had this situation before. However, there could be we could take a look uh, at the window placements again, just if we can um, more so um, exaggerate the offset of the window, just to improve that um, the sight lines, like to, to make sure that they don't overlap as much. Um, we could look into some louvers uh, that will both add some visual interest to the facade as well as do provide some sort of um, privacy between the two. Obviously not louvers for the whole window, but uh, part of the window. We can definitely- I would, I, would, I would certainly encourage you to investigate that. Remember mm -hmm. that the other master bedroom is one car length away. So it's really quite immediate. So think about it. Um, and then I have one, I have a question um, just on the interior plan, um, but just because it's germane to site planning in my view. So if you just pan over to the left there to the ground floor, you have your bike storage in these units and they're all drawn the same. Can you please explain what's happening and what type of bike would fit in that or what your intention was? Because if we can't accommodate the bikes and it's gonna come out of it's gonna come out of floor area. Right. So um, each of the bikes here are the sizes that are required by zoning bylaw for the class one. Um, right. and it's the I it, I could I could assume that it would be one of the vertical um, bike racks that can be installed in one of these um, bicycle spaces. Okay. Yeah, no, as long as it's been considered, they just seem mm -hmm. really small to me. Um, and then these are three or four bedroom yeah. units. Um, I presume they have children in more than one bike. So it's just something to think about, um, but we're not on comments yet. So one last question is more for Travis. And this goes to the ground floor plane, or I guess your landscape plan. So I have to say I'm admittedly a little bit confused because I don't see, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's not really a ground plane landscape plan. What we're looking at here is a composite of roof plan and then ground plane below it, right? So the reason why I'm asking is because I was having a difficult time from this drawing understanding how the vehicles were working and what the change was from the drive aisles, these 20 foot lanes, um, transitioning into those driveways. So we know now, having looked at the package, that the, the lane, for example, between blocks one and block two, that that's, I'm assuming that's a black top, like that's an asphalt lane, right? And does that asphalt then continue into, into the edge of the slab of the garage? Because if you zoom in here, it's shown as white versus gray. I'm just trying to understand. All right. Um, yeah, you're right. We we wanted a plan that would represent the whole site, and and there is a slight offset where this roof does overhang slightly beyond the garage. So the at grade is is slightly bigger than what you can see in between these drive aisles. Um, typically, what you see happening, and also you know we're not showing curbs yet either. I mean, we don't have the civil fully engaged for those types of drawings yet, but there would be a curb in here. But typically beyond the drive aisle, it is a concrete driveway band, whatever length or width that is. And we've also added in some decorative paving um, just between the units to help sort of just provide a bit more interest there. But I would expect it to be concrete going into the garage and an asphalt lane is, is the most typical treatment. And, and we'll get there with the next uh, drawing development. Thank you, that was helpful. Um, so we'll give the panel one more chance for last questions before we move on to comments. If anything was missed, I think we've been fairly comprehensive. Um, open call to the panel for any more questions. I see one hand up, that's Phil. Go ahead. Sorry, I, just a last one. Uh, it, it, did I hear a comment that this would be strata and therefore they would be responsible for the amenity spaces? I don't recall, Greg, or, or the proponent or Gordon, anyone? Uh, we, what we did mention um, was that the access for the garbage was going to be strata, so it would be a private uh, contractor coming up to pick up the garbage. Um, but uh, the, we do have the clients here that can come up, comment on um, the uh, strata agreement. Yeah, yeah, sorry, the, the, the question, this would be strata as opposed to individual owners that your the developer is selling to. Well, I mean, you would, but my question is who's responsible for the playground, for example? 
Uh, I I would. Oh. Oh, um, I would. Uh, the clients are on the call right now, so I can defer that uh, question to the client. Hi, Bill. To to answer your question, this is going to be a stratified property, so there will be individual owners, uh, like uh, taking up like almost each individual unit. But uh, speaking of the amenity space, that's the responsible of Strata Corporation taking care of the amenity space. If that's your question. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Is that clear enough, Phil? So clear. basically, because of the number of units, the Strata Corp will be formed and will be responsible for common response. That, that, thank you. Okay. All right then. Um, so, without any further questions that I see, I'm going to we're going to move into comments. And uh, for the proponents, I would ask that you just uh, hear through the comments, and then if there is anything, we can circle back to you after the panel has had um, their um, has made their uh, remarks. And so, I'm going to start again in the same order with Vice Chair Paul Rust. Um, Paul, I'd invite you to share your comments on. On this proposal, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the having gone through all the plans, the the plans are excellent. The room sizes, the distribution of the rooms, and so on is great. The issue of the between block two and block three, I think it was, is privacy issue is an issue that could be. Easily corrected, I think, with a, a kind of a dormer arrangement of some sort that would, I mean, bedrooms don't need huge windows, but uh, in this case, I think you have to sacrifice window size for privacy, and, and I think you can accomplish that with a clever arrangement. But I am impressed with your planning. Uh, the, the individual units are quite nice. Uh, the issue of the rooftop uh, was a block two. Uh, I think probably uh, reducing that uh, area of the uh, unusable roof to something much less is probably achievable with a screen on the west side that would offer that privacy to the people on the west. So I think that can be fixed fairly easily. The <clears throat> other thing I have is about the exterior, the uh, uh, elevations show a panelization which has become a cliche in a lot of the townhouse developments that I've noticed around White Rock, including those in Surrey. And I think it's a bit uh, overdone, if, if, if you will, with the, the contrast between the very light planes and the dark planes. And I think that could be accomplished more with texture than with color. I, I just think it's a bit garish and it's becoming, as I say, a cliche. It's 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 invasive to the whole uh, milieu of the of, of townhouse development. I just worry a bit about that. I'd like to see the paving more of a using that decorative permeable paving throughout rather than any asphalt surface because these are intimate spaces and they can afford to be more of a kind of a European feel to it with, with that kind of paving. But other than that, I think this is a very well-designed development. I think you've done well, and I think the, the input from the staff in White Rock that Greg has described in the initial presentation is, is very good, very helpful. Uh, uh, and apart from this, the issue about the garbage, again, I brought that up at the beginning, I think again, that that, that should be um, resolved in some way that, that uh, it works a little better. Uh, I think for now that, oh yes, and the other thing I was thinking of, the, the little uh, uh, shed roofs over the stairways to the roof and the roof terraces themselves, uh, those could create a hazard when they dump snow, so I, I, I suspect you'd better consider the, uh, the, the snow guards on those roofs. And the other issue is when you do a lot of, and I've been involved with these things where 
where you have roof decks like that exposed, you have to be very careful with the treatment of plumbing vents and the like. Uh, they, if you're downwind from a plumbing vent, it can be quite uh, pretty nasty at times. So I would suggest you, you think carefully about collecting those and putting them into the highest point of the roof. And I think that just about covers it uh, for me. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Rushir, you're up next with comments, please. Um, I think this is uh, this has been a by and large, as uh, Paul said, uh, good design, good layout. Uh, there are a few issues that will need to be resolved. Uh, I guess apart from what uh, Paul said, I am slightly uncomfortable with 4.5 meters towards the north. With so much happening with parks, uh, staircases, landings, all that stuff happening. So um, I don't mind the three meters at the south. Um, you know, I can probably live with uh, one and a half uh, meters to the east as well, because that is one block and the other block is kind of set back. So it isn't a big wall. Uh, which could be treated, but uh, but yeah, uh, I'm uncomfortable 4.5 meter at the north. I won't support that. Uh, another uh, issue is that I can see uh, the the hierarchy of movement as shown in the pavement patterns is rather confusing. There's a distinct paving uh, square at the entrance, and then there's a large rectangle. Uh, which apart from the visitors parking path going in and uh, probably a little bit of PMT interface does not do much. Um, there could be some pedestrian uh, sidewalks because you have la distinct lack of driveways which could be inset on the side of the roads, especially towards uh, the northern block. Uh, there could be some other keys to direct movement. Uh, a reflective in the surface materials, etc. So uh, I think that a little bit of surface treatments would go a long way. I am slightly unclear about and uh, not confident about uh, the workability of grades and everything. Uh, Gordon said that the civil consultant has been retained, but Travis alluded to the fact that they haven't been engaged yet. So I don't know if uh, despite having complex uh, cross section with the steps going down and the, that uh, talking about the grades, how the one uh, master bedroom overlooks the other one, etc. Just make sure they are done and working well. The grades of finished floor elevations of various blocks are working well in, in relation with each other, which uh, obviously will require a little bit of cut and fill stuff that civil would have been doing. I don't know whether that's been done. Um, I don't think the row of trees can be accommodated in one and a half meters out there if the two meters dedicated towards the east side is going to be sidewalk. There's going to be a gravel strip. There's going to be edge of the sidewalk. And if the trees are done, yes, it is going to be a rather tight situation, but you probably might need to use some structural soil or silver cells or something like that. But uh, I don't think it's a good idea to place uh, that kind of a tree there. Uh, maybe Serbian spruce or something columnar that is done there, which doesn't spread as much and doesn't uh, require so much of leaf litter might be handled there. Um, regarding separations to the north and south, because the setbacks are rather meager, uh, there I would like to see a section with a much greater detail in landscape, how the uh, height of uh, the screening fence, the hedge, the sidewalk, etc., relate with the steps in the patio and all that stuff. Um, I'm not sure that privacy can be easily achieved by providing a small strip of a hedge, both towards the north and the south, because we don't have very much space there. Uh, if you have four feet of a uh, sidewalk and you have uh, all that that's happening there, you're probably left with foot, foot and a half, two feet. And I guess uh, towards looking into a back of a commercial building here and 
uh, apartment building to the south with those tight setbacks, I'm a little concerned about how those will be dead. Um, I also am not very confident of how the look of the western property edge is going to be. There is screening plant planting to the western boundary, but again, one would have liked a little bit of a gradation with fence, screening planting, etc., and showing a little more variety so that vehicles turning that see uh, the units on the left side have something happening on the other side rather than just a fence or uh, something like that because they're back on to residential development and we've talked ample um, length on how the rooftop decks are uh, best reduced towards that side but on ground plane i guess that interface becomes even closer so better treatment would be recommended towards that side as well um yeah those are my comments thank you wonderful thank you for sure and nicholas uh you're up next you have some comments great Thank you, Joe. Um, just sorry, I'm just going to re read some, kind of convert my my scribble notes here. Um, okay, I guess I'll, I'll start from like maybe the top down in terms of scale. Um, you know, I get, I mean, I guess, the, like you said, the allowable was 1.5 on, on the site and we're at 0 0.9954, or what it is. Um, so I, I understand like you're still well under, but I've still struggled with the, with the density of the amount of people put onto the site. But it meets the OCP, so it is what it is there. Um, but that being said, um, my main comments, I guess Joe touched on to the privacy, so he went on that one for the detail that I that so that I will. Um, but I'm sorry, reading my notes here. Um, I'm thinking just really in, in general that there's a lot of concrete. I'll be frank, and I fear that the two concrete sort of driveways that lead lead you to all the various townhomes is going to feel like just like a, a laneway like the back of the back yeah essentially the back of, of, a, of a development in the back lane that it's really not going to be a very welcoming drive to and out of your house um i sort of pictured when i was trying to stare at this for the last little bit kind of stare at this and just think about what would this place kind of feel like at you know 7 p.m when everyone's back home and what is it going to kind of feel like at 12 o'clock on a Saturday or Sunday when probably there will probably be a bunch of families, kids running around. So you have essentially, you know, you have this sort of dreamy kind of thing, you know, uh, utopian feel that maybe, you know, kids will be playing basketball down these concrete things on, on the weekends or, you know, parents with their kids. Um, and in the evenings, you know, all the families are up in the rooftop on a day like today having, having dinner. So in thinking about that, I'm just, again, I'm thinking about that, you know, I guess to put it straight, it'd be great if you could just put the pavers everywhere. That's kind of the short comment on it. Um, I just feel the concrete is, is just over time. It's not kind of really welcoming because you're kind of driving off the main street, off state, and you're going into your own little island, kind of your own little mini development here. And I just hopefully it doesn't feel like too much where it like it does. Like I said, it just feels like you're you're going into a lane, into a lane, and then into a lane. So. Hopefully you can do something there with the with the paving. That's maybe one comment there. The other thing when it comes to the rooftop, um, I personally wouldn't leave it to the strata owners to do planting. I would do it for them. Because I sort of feel the top, because I said like the if you're not playing your basketball running with your kids out on the on the concrete asphalt there, you're probably hanging out on the rooftop. And I think out of all the with going back to the landscape comments. There's really no vegetation life when you're up on the on the on the top at all, and I think it's kind of dreamy to think that you know give it to the strata guys to, to the owners to do it their own, but in reality it ends up being such a mess that you wish you just did it yourself, like you just as the architect and landscape architects you sort of just did it for them, so to speak, or at least set it up properly that if they did plant it, it will grow in a proper way. It's not kind of just a mishmash of bicycles and random planters all trying to make everyone's trying to do their own thing um especially in, in a strata setup it'd be nice that there's a common sort of theme or infrastructure for the planting on on the rooftops so there's another comment these are no particular orders, just all my sort of random comments that one and then last last one where it comes down again to landscaping um 
in reviewing sort of the landscape design, the com common amenity space. Uh, personally, I think you know adding. I think the benches are fine, like the furniture is fine, but I think the things like adding um, the play structure or the sandbox is kind of just like you've just kind of just plopped it into the site plan. I personally think it'd be a lot more beneficial to the developments if you do actually permanent landscape design feature of the space. Um, for instance, it could be a sculpture or something, something that can be playful over time, not something where you're actually picking up dog poop in the middle of a sandbox and your kids want to play in there. So, um, uh, there's that one. What else, uh, so, what do I get here? Amenity space sandbox, concrete. Um, yeah, I think I'll stop there. So, I guess going back to it, so pavers be, would be great. Um, planting for the rooftop, and I think redesign the common amenity space. So, it's something that's less maintenance and something more for people to use in their own way. Thanks. But, other, hey. sorry, going back, I should say, Overall, it's been a great development. Sorry, I should start with that. And uh -huh. thank you for the to the to the to Greg and his team for you know pushing that far all up to this presentation. Sorry, I should have started with that. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Nicholas. Appreciate that. Uh, moving to Phil for comments, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, first of all, I I agree with the comments about the paving uh, about the the roadways, uh, and think that block four roofs just need more uh, more thought while still protecting the west side, uh, the privacy on the west side. Uh, so let me now go to I I appreciate that others have looked at more details on the interior, the design of the actual units. I I was not spending as much time on that and that wasn't my focus which I'll get to in a minute but the one area that uh, I think Joe mentioned that that struck me was people with townhouses there'll be at least two people three or four there are three bed two three bedrooms and stuff and the whole issue about having space for one bike seems uh, uh, inappropriate I know there may not be some requirement by the city on this but it's just not 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 an intelligent design uh, for that, they should plan for more, or at least have some space, whether it's in a dedicated space or not, even if it's uh, on a wall or something. So that's about the bikes. Um, let me, th those are details in a way, but they're important for people to live. Now I'm going to go to a much more general and concerning issue, which uh, follows from, and I've tried to take our guide, our our job much, you know, very seriously with respect to the DPA guidelines and um, uh, and uh, and the things that are in our mandate, uh, roles and mandate of the city and what we're supposed to look at. So that's the rest of my comments will be about that, not a, not so much about, um, and it really has to do with form, character, livability uh, from with respect to the exterior. So if we look at this, keep this uh, this slide up, it really comes to this. And I'm that's why my concerns about this, why, which is why I did, you know, about the overall layout. Uh, I know this has gotten evolved over time from an apartment building down to 23 and now 21. But the reality for me is I'm coming and looking at this 21 and the issues that it, it raises Obviously, the developer, the owner, wants to put in as many townhouses as they want. But my issue is, it it seems it has totally constrained uh, the site, uh, putting in so many units. And what it's done is it creates problems, which I'll now list. I'll go from some specifics. For example, the visitor parking. I know it's not a requirement, but it's there. And it's important, especially because I don't know if, if there, Greg, I think, said there's on street parking. Um, you know, I don't know what will happen if it's widened, whether they'll be on street or not. But looking at the, the parking here, we've got one accessible for van, two for small cars, and one down at the bottom for a regular size. Well, anybody coming in to, to as a visitor or a service person won't, I mean, obviously the accessibility one can be listed as, as accessible site only. But if somebody comes in, as many people have, with a van, 
that is uh, uh, not uh, except, um, uh, a handicap for uh, have a, a space for a handicap won't fit into the two spots there, and they won't necessarily know that there's one at the very end in the corner. So it seems like these parking spots of just where can we put them, and it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, and or somebody will go down and look for the one that's down at the bottom left and find that somebody's there and has to turn around. So it really starts, it, it, the, the theme of my comments are about the constraints on livability by having to put in so many units. But the bigger issue is about the spacing and about the, the, the setbacks and looking at what's gonna, about State Street and to the north. The, the west and the south are fine to me as long as they put in uh, plantings, uh, appropriate planting, screening, and fencing. And that fencing has to go all the way around, uh, including to the bottom left, the south, the southwest. Um, so assuming that, that that's taken care of, it really has to do with the how, cheap, you know, how much, because of, space for cars and turnarounds and so on, how much block one is pushed to the right towards State Street and how much block four is pushed north toward that building. And uh, I'm going now going to the, um, to the guidelines and uh, guideline 22.6.2a, says minimum sidewalks minimum 1.8 meters and that one on the north isn't meeting it the one on the state street i presume will be city sidewalk and those are the only and and i'm not so worried about on the south but that space up on the north is just right up basically there's no room and once and if and when state street is widened it's not enough room for uh, plant, sorry, it's not just the sidewalks, it's plantings and it's, it's sidewalks uh, on the north and plantings on the north and the east. Just, I just don't see it working. You know, maybe in another town like downtown Vancouver, it may make sense where space is, but I'm looking at this white rock and say this is too dense and, and, and crammed in for white rock. Um, it, so going back to 22.6.2a, it says minimum 1.8 meters. I assume that should apply here. And looking at, um, there's another one about setbacks, which is 22.6.1b. And that talks about three meters and six meters. Now those may apply or may be interpreted to apply. They talk about uh, to high rise buildings or something, I don't know, but I'm reading it and that's my job. And it talks about set buildings back from the property line at least three meters to provide enough space for gardens and shade trees in the front yard. Well, we're not getting anywhere close to that. And I appreciate the roof gardens, but that doesn't overcome the real problem that I have on the north and east side, and I think Joe has raised this issue, which is also valid, about how close those buildings are. But I could almost be blocks two and three. I could almost live with that if you, because at least that's a common area where people could meet and they can talk and they can play, uh, you know, kids, although I'd like to see that. So I think the only solution to my concerns are fewer townhouses re reconfigured. That's really where I am. Thank you. Oh, let, before I go, let me make sure I've cut off, checked off all my others. Oh, I'll just, some minor points, but I'll raise them um, for consideration. The play area is in the north east, and there's a question about the, the unit on block four that's near there. There needs to be some concern for or consideration of noise there. That's one. It's a detail. Um, I've mentioned about visitor parking. Uh, I don't think that'll work so well. Uh, and, oh, going back to, sorry, the setbacks. Uh, one of the requirements is about effect for us to consider is effects on trees. And I just don't see a meaningful, they are cutting down a lot of trees here, and I don't see meaningful trees growing to maturity. That's another one of the guidelines is about 
um, 622.6.2E talks about growing to maturity. And, um, and I don't see it says, uh, so a lot of large, mature, healthy trees and landscape. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's about protecting trees. You, know, you want them to grow to maturity and have something that, that, that is good for the city and looks good from the street. And with, the, with this minimal space, especially uh, everywhere in the front, you know, in the front by the, the stairways, that's just not going to happen. Uh, and I'll finish making sure I've covered all of my comments. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Faye, any comments for um, the applicants? And you're probably muted. Hi. Hi. Okay. Um, I'm not familiar with the previous submission. I'm, uh, I'm looking at it now with the 21 units. I'm very familiar with State Road and the commercial property to the north. That is a very busy area, especially starting in September when everything goes back to school. There's a lot of traffic on State Road. Uh, there is a dance studio right on the corner where the amenity, um, common amenity space is uh, proposed. And so um, parents dropping off their children tend to either park in that commercial area. If there's no parking, they're pulling up in a rush, parking on the outside of just on the outside of State Road, which would be on the outside of the entrance. That's why I have a real concern about the common amenity space and where it's placed. You're really going to need to be mindful of, you know, it's a very busy road and the amount of traffic. Um, my other concern is the rooftop for Block 3. I think we need to, um, as Paul mentioned, reduce the unusable area and come up with um, a redesign for that. Um, I, I still have the concern about the, the, uh, the block one and two and what's going to happen on garbage day, recycling day. It'll be a little bit chaotic. So you may want to look at what some options could be for that. Um, I really like the rooftop terraces. I think that's, you know, a, a really nice feature. Um, and also having the common amenity space, that is a, uh, a nice feature for everybody in, um, in the development. Um, you know, when you look at multifamily developments and the clustering, um, and the entrance design, all of that is shared space. Um, and so you may want to have to do some reconsiderations around um, the, the entrance in terms of um, um, the amenity space as well. And I agree also with Joe's comment about the privacy issues uh, for between block two and uh, for block two, um, with block three being at a higher elevation. Other than that, um, I think that the development blends in nicely with the neighborhood, um, especially when you look at some of the townhouse developments and row house developments that are on um, 16th Avenue and Bluff Road. So that's it for me. Great, thank you. Um, so I'll start with my comments, um, or finish with my comments, I should say. Um, I think that a lot of issues uh, with respect to the site density, like site coverage, um, have been talked about a lot, and I think it's important um, 
And it's one of the things that gives me the most pause with this particular proposal. Um, the dry vials are pushing uh, uh, block one onto State Road. Um, you know, we talked about a 1.5 meter setback to the new property line, but we didn't talk about the Juliet balconies and the projecting front porches. So the reality is, is that we're closer than 1.5. I don't know what the number is, but we certainly are closer than five feet to that property line. And that worries me. And it really is a byproduct, I think, of, of the um, just, uh, I think you'll probably uh, hit the nail on the head there. It does boil down to number of units and whether or not this is the right typology to achieve those units. Uh, we've talked about the pressure that it's putting on the north side yard as well. So basically all of the site edges are being um, squeezed to their absolute minimum and beyond in order to accommodate the dry vial, dry vials to allow for the, this number of units. And that's kind of troubling, um, you know, whether or not it's in line with OCP. I think that OCPs uh, are, are valuable because they're, they're wrought with a lot of study and a lot of hopeful sensibility. And whenever we start to move away from OCPs, from my perspective, that worries me. So when we start pushing um, smaller setbacks um, in proposals, uh, we can see what the byproduct is. And it worries me that there's not um, a comprehensive known plan for the cross section of state and how it's going to interface with the front face of block one. It's, uh, it's a little bit, a little close for comfort for me, but it seems more like an urban typology than a suburban one, but that's just a comment. Um, but along those lines, I would say, and this has again been touched on by a number, um, that all of the asphalt and all the concrete and all the permeable pavers and all of the solid surface roof decks, that there is an incredible lack of green space, actual ground. And permeable pavers for me are a poor substitute um, for planting. They certainly meet requirements on a technical perspective, but from a livability, this does worry me that this is just going to be an easy um, So that's uh, the other one here is, so number, uh, sorry, I have three items. So that was like the main one. Number two item is, uh, I've, we've already talked about the privacy, so I won't bring it up again, but I will talk generally about the suites. Now, certainly there are better room sizes than we've seen in other applications. But I do worry about, again, the aggressive nature of the number of units. What it's done is, uh, with some of them, and I think I pointed it out in block two or three, or one of the blocks, that there were four bedrooms proposed. And <clears throat> if you look at the living room space for a four bedroom, and assume a four bedroom has two parents and three kids, so you've got five people uh, potentially, they couldn't all sit in the living room together. To me, that's a little bit strange. And so, you know, as this project continues to develop, I would certainly suggest to the components to, to think about the interior livability. I won't go kind of into more detail, but there are some aspects that are good, but some aspects that worry me as well. Um, and then lastly, just more on an architectural note, um, we've talked about, uh, or I think it was Paul originally who talked about um, the expression of townhouse developments. And I do agree, and I do think that particularly off of um, State Road, um, I, I realize that the upper floors are some undulation in the face, but on the lower floor where we're trying to establish individual identity, like this is where I live, it's all, it appears to me to be all one face with little or no differentiation in the siding material, except for these covered porches that are that one point five meters. So I feel like um, it's almost like we're just trying to put so many people in here that we can't even afford to undulate the bottom level because it's going to put squeeze on the dry bottom. Everything is to me is at the maximum on one end and at the minimum on the other end. So it is a concern for me, um, but I'll leave my comments there. I think that uh, the group has spoken well uh, on both positives and negatives. And so I would like to open it up to the floor. Um, for a motion on this project. Um, Joe, before a motion, I have a question for Greg. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I think it's good for Greg. Greg, um, there are two guidelines. Uh, I mean, I'll make a motion too. Um, if, uh, and basically my motion is, is to, uh, is the third choice that we have a recommendation to defer the project pending the resolution of issues. And we have that list of issues. So that would be my motion. Um, 
in other words, coming back. But I need to ask a question and make a comment about that. Sure. Do you have a question to Greg? Greg, are you? So do you want? I don't know what order you want to do it. Should I do that, or do you want? Well, to well, it's. I mean, typically with the motion, we'll be we'll be able to discuss the motion once we have a seconded, and then if there's any questions within there, you know, we can have that um, discussion with Greg. Uh, so if your motion then, paraphrasing is, or sorry, if I don't have the number. It's, in our, it's in our terms of reference. It's the third choice, a recommendation to defer the project pending the resolution of issues to be listed by the panel, which we've done, following which the application would be brought back to the panel and the applicant would be expected to speak to how the changes were made to address the issues. Okay, great. And uh, before I Ask for a second about Greg's hand up, perhaps responding to uh, this procedure. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, normally, we would um, give the applicant a chance just to respond, provide feedback on the comments that were raised. It may not be that it's an itemized comment response, but it would just maybe be sure. some high level feedback on the comments. Sure, yeah, no, fair enough. Um, there were a lot of comments, and so. Uh, Gordon, uh, Travis, and Gloria, I, I would invite you for some closing remarks, um, but I would ask that, it, as Greg said, please don't item by item. I, I think that it's fair to say that as a panel, we're looking at it uh, as a bigger picture. So perhaps if you want to give us uh, uh, your feedback on our feedback. Uh, yeah, uh, so thank you everyone for your comments. Um, you know, without going, like like uh, Joe's uh, implying, to, to, without going into, you know, an itemized list, I think uh, a lot of the comments, um, there are uh, design solutions that can be uh, addressed um, each of the comments. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you everyone for your um, comments. And Travis, anything, any comments from the landscape side? Um, similarly, I'll just say thank you for your comments. Um, yeah, there's a number of things that were discussed, ways that, that we can accommodate some of these different concerns. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll work on that as we move forward. Thank right, you. I appreciate your presentation. Thank you. Uh, so back to the item on the table. So Phil has proposed a motion. Yeah. Um, Thanks. I'll second it. I'll second it. So Rashir has seconded the motion. So I would ask the Panel, any further discussion on the motion? Um, happy to call a vote. Um, or if I anyone, have, they have to do with the question for Greg, uh, and and people can then comment on it. The 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 fourth choice was the recommendation to deny the application on the basis that of the factors to be listed. This option assumes the applicant is not amenable to making changes in response to feedback. So the feedback that I've given, and I think Joe and some others may have, uh, is that the, the, it's, it's crammed in. That's what's creating the problems with respect to very limited green space, almost, almost no green space at the ground level. Uh, problems with the, the setbacks. I mean, these are all interrelated. I, you know, there are other detailed questions and issues to improve the design. But the issue that I'm raising is fundamental. It's about, it won't accommodate 21 units like this. So there's no point to me for them to come back. Sorry. Yes, so, I think that's just feedback. Okay, unless the, the developer, I mean, they can ignore what I've said, the city can ignore what I've said, but, but to me, that's the fundamental issue. And if they don't address that issue, if they can't change the setbacks, to me, there's no point in coming back because it's constrained so much. So that's why I was, but I don't feel that it's, that I should simply say a recommend deny with no opportunity to come back. So what my question for, so that's the fee, that's the sense of why I moved that motion. So my question to Greg is why the city or did the city have a discussion about why they're not meeting fundamental uh, guidelines in the, in the development uh, guidelines about setbacks and um, and street width, I mean sidewalk widths and things like that. Those are, you know, or do you interpret them differently than I do? Through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I can try to be brief, but it's a big question and um, try not to engage in, in any sort of debate, um, but 
Regarding 2262 of the guidelines, Phil, sub A, where you give reference to the 1.8 meter sidewalk width, if you read that guideline in its entirety, it says improve the public realm with widened sidewalks, minimum 1.8 meters. So this is not speaking to the design of private sidewalks. It's speaking to opportunities to take dedication for road widening, for sidewalk widening, where the city has within the public realm deficient sidewalk widths. So that's, that's part of the intention of that guideline. And I do think it's really important that we recognize that these are guidelines. They're not uh, regulatory standards as outlined in the zoning bylaw. So if we wanted all private sidewalks to be 1.8 meters, that would be a provision we would have in the zoning bylaw. So I, I would encourage the panel to look at the, um, the design guidelines, the development permit area guidelines with a degree of flexibility. I will admit I've had my own internal discussions with my colleagues about the level of specificity that some of these design guidelines have. Um, Similarly, with respect to the 3.0 meter wide separation between buildings and property lines uh, per, to provide enough space for gardens, shade trees in the front yard, um, it's really important that we not get overly fixated on the number. Um, but that being said, we are taking a two meter wide dedication to help achieve some additional uh, space for plantings within the boulevard. But what we need to look at are what's the intention of this guideline? So it's to provide space for gardens and shade trees in the front yard. Now, I think Rashir's brought up some good points. And I think to your to your kind of underlying question here, Phil, is should we be looking at uh, now you have a motion on the floor. It's been moved and seconded to bring the file back. So to defer it and, and give the applicant a chance to respond to your feedback. Um, that's the motion on the floor. Um, if the panel doesn't feel that there's a solution to be found, and that's probably not the appropriate motion to make. Uh, but that being said, that motion's on the floor, and I think um, it probably would, would be, I don't know, courteous to the applicant to give them a chance to respond. I think if this was, say, the second presentation to the panel and they weren't demonstrating any effort to resolve the concerns, and that may be where you look at that fourth motion where it would be recommend denial. Um, but those are some initial thoughts, and and I I would I appreciate um, that you know that Phil that you're going through this the details of the guidelines with a very fine tooth comb. I think that's kind of exactly what your mandate is asking for. But would encourage the panel to look at the guidelines uh, as to their underlying intention. Thank you, Rick. And and I should say that um, Gordon has made it clear that uh, and Travis that they're willing and, and more than willing to respond to comments from a design perspective. Um, and so I, I think that the motion that we have on the floor, I still think is the appropriate one. Um, and, you know, Phil, they might surprise us. You know, that very often happens in design, right? Where clever solutions um, find their way to the surface that address all of our concerns. No, um, and I, I, let me just say that my concerns about the setbacks came independent of reading the guidelines. My question yep. came, and given the guidelines, why the, why we're seeing it like this? That's, I guess, what my what why you know I wish we they had uh, better met the intent of the guidelines, in my view. So I'll just leave it at that. And with yeah, my yeah, no, and that's perfectly valid. And and I had a similar one, not so much on the north, but on state, right? Like, um, you know, to be close to a guideline versus to cut it in half is much different or whatever the numbers are right so again just with caution i don't disagree with you um uh, the panel is there any other comments or are we ready to call uh the question okay so without any hands raised i'll call the question uh, those in favor of the motion um to defer and have the applicant return as as phil's uh, original motion um, we'll go in order, so just because it's the, the screen is a bit funky in terms of who I can see and who I can't. So, Paul, are you in favor of this returning? Paul Rust, I'm going to go through the panel members. You might be muted. Sorry, was I muted there? Yeah, no, yeah. I'm in favor of the motion, yes. Okay, so in favor of returning, and Rashir? 
may be muted for sure. Nope. Oh. I think he dropped through zone, I think. Okay. So we'll go to Nicholas and hopefully he'll connect back. Yes, uh, I'm in favor of returning. Uh, just a quick question here. When are we, when are, I mean, after we, we all pass or no pass this, would we then set the list of, of conditions? Of the um, comments? So that, that's because a good question. Comments, when do we yeah. to the actual yeah. So normally Greg paraphrases back to us, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the list of things were quite extensive. So my colleague Bonnie and I have been taking um, fairly detailed meeting minutes. So what we would do is the way I frame the motion, if it, if it's sort of satisfactory to the panel, is that the panel recommends that the application be deferred from proceeding to council pending the resolution of issues as communicated during the meeting. OK. Yeah. I was just wondering, was that a versus do we do we need to filter it now to the top, whatever, three or five comments or not? Well, uh, uh, yeah, I think ultimately we'll be seeing draft um, of the minutes anyways, and then be able to. Um, so let, let's just move on, uh, if you don't mind then. So uh, Phil, yeah. Thanks, yes. so, Phil, so uh, in favor and okay. Are you in favor or against the motion? In favor of returning or against? I am in favor of them coming back with a revision. And um, me as the last, I'm also in favor of. So except for Rashir, who dropped off, it's unanimous um, passing of the motion. So again, um, thank you to the proponents for presenting your project to us. You know, there are some certainly some good aspects and some things that can be worked on. We look forward to having back um, and and seeing what you're able to do with these comments. Thank you. OK, all so um, this was the one and only item on our list on our agenda. So I, I'll just kind of call an end to the meeting. Uh, it is 545. Uh, thank you all for attending and thank you for your comments. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.